Hey, how's it going, everybody? It is Josh Thomas here from the Bit Block, and I wanted to jump in and give my opinion on uh, some new Nintendo news that I that I noticed this morning. Some new some new news from Nintendo this morning, and it's actually really uh, not exciting. It's actually quite disappointing. Um, so many of you probably know already. Nintendo took an opportunity this morning to upload a video to their YouTube channel and probably social media and whatnot where they announced that Metroid Prime 4 is starting over. Its development is being canceled with the current developer, and it is moving over to a new developer. So, a lot of things that I want to unload about this. There's a lot of things that we got to talk about with this, because there's a lot of... Okay, okay. So, um, there's, there is some good news. Before we get into what a crippling disappointment this truly is, no. <laughs> we'll talk about the good news. So, the good news is... The Whoever was developing it before, we don't know. Nintendo is obviously not going to officially announce that, especially at this point. Like, they're not going to announce what developer was responsible for making a horrible Metroid Prime 4 game to the point where it had to be, you know, deleted. Um, but I think maybe it'll leak out in years to come. But what we do know is the new developer is one that I think we all know and love as Nintendo fans. It's a developer that has a track record of constant, wonderful, brilliant games. Uh, it's Retro Studios. You know that already, probably. But yeah, the original, the original development studio that made the first three and really the only Metroid Prime games, because we're not going to count Metroid Prime Federation Force. Let's just all pretend Metroid Prime Federation Force didn't happen, okay? Good. Um, so yeah, the, the original Metro Prime Trilogy, uh, Retro Studios also made Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, as well as DKC Returns on the Wii. So five games, all five games that have come out of this studio have been fantastico. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. That is good news. Some of you might know in the past, I've gotten up on my soapbox, whatever that means, about how I don't applaud the idea of Nintendo simply announcing a game and showing us a logo for a game. Like, you know, Metroid Prime 4, when they showed us that logo, I wasn't one of the people that was screaming and jumping up and down. Which, by the way, uh, you see now why that was a bad idea, right? Because we're not getting that game for a long time now, so it was almost like the game didn't even exist. Um, but the reason I don't applaud for a logo is because for me, and I think this should be the, the same for everyone, it's really more important who is developing a game rather than the logo. So when we didn't know who was developing Prime 4, I was like, okay, that's kind of cool, but who's making it? Now that we know Retro Studios is making it, I think we can be a bit excited because they have a track record of making fantastic games. Um, so I'm excited about that. You know, like like when we, like Luigi's Mansion 3, okay? I love the original Luigi's Mansion, but I'll be honest with you, I don't really like next level games. I don't think that they're really good at developing Mario uh, games. I think they did really good at Punch-Out!, uh, I think Mario Strikers is fun, even though it's very weird. It doesn't really feel like a Mario game, but it's really fun, the gameplay. But man, Next Level Games is terrible at making Luigi's Mansion titles. And Luigi's Mansion 3, based on that preview, looks like it is a sequel to Dark Moon, and I don't like Dark Moon, so I don't know. So that's why the developer is very important to me. So uh, I'm very excited about that. That's the good news. Retro Studios is making it. Let's talk about... I don't want to say the bad news, but let's talk about some other things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, the first thing I think we need to keep in mind is that that means this game is not going to be around for a long time. I mean, we're talking like if I had to estimate, I'd say 2022 at the earliest. Uh, this game is probably just starting development over at Retro Studios this year. I'd assume they started in January. Uh, you know, we have no way of knowing, but I would imagine based on the announcement happening now that they're probably now officially underway. You know, they have a team maybe assembled and they're getting to work. But a game does not instantly start development. What you do first is you conceptualize, you come up with ideas, you figure out what direction you're going to take, and then you start getting your artists together and your sound designers and they sort of start building it in a conceptual stage. And that can take a long time. Especially with Nintendo. Nintendo is a, a company that really spends a good deal of time conceptualizing games. At least they used to. I don't know if that's really true so much anymore based on some of the titles that have released on the Switch. They seem like they're just pretty much, you know, on autopilot and they didn't give them much thought. We'll get into that later. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think 2022 is probably when we can reasonably expect to see the game and then maybe it'll release holiday. You know, like we see it e 3 2022 releases holiday 2022. I would say do not expect this game in 
a year or two. This is a big game. Metroid Prime games are not something that you can make really quickly. Metroid Prime 2, I think they made that in like a year, year and a half. That had a smaller development cycle, but then uh, they were reusing an engine from the first game, and it is actually probably the weakest of the Metroid Prime games, so I don't know. So yeah, don't expect it anytime soon. That kind of sucks. Uh, hopefully Nintendo has a lot of really big games that will come out before Metroid Prime 4 to kind of tide us over. I imagine they will, so we'll see. Uh, the other thing that's worth mentioning is, you know, Retro Studios has in the past had many opportunities to make Metroid Prime 4. Like, Nintendo has clearly wanted them to make a new Metroid Prime game, but they turned it down. So we know that Retro Studios has shown a disinterest in making a new Metroid game and that they wanted to move on to something new. In fact, we know this from interviews with people who worked on the original Metroid Prime team, that they, that they were really hungry to do something different. So it is worth keeping that in mind. Even though I would never for a second question Retro's ability to make a fantastic game, it is worth realizing that they didn't want to do this and maybe Nintendo is just kind of forcing them to because Nintendo sort of owns them. So I don't know. I don't know. It's just worth, it's worth keeping in mind that this is a, something they didn't want to do and now all of a sudden they do. So hopefully they're doing it for the right reasons and not being basically forced to come in and save Nintendo. Which, by the way, that is what Retro Studios is doing. They are saving Nintendo's hide on this one. Um, so yeah. And I, you know, I could totally sympathize with Retro Studios. I, I totally get how it would not exactly be fun to constantly make the same franchise and that it would be more fun to be able to explore different characters and different worlds rather than doing basically the same thing again and again. So hopefully they have some fresh ideas for Metroid Prime 4. Give it some time. I mean, it's already delayed, so you might as well spend a good amount of time coming up with some really genuinely cool ideas uh, for where they could take the series in. Um, also, really quickly, it is definitely also worth mentioning that Retro Studios has lost a decent amount of really talented employees over the years. It seems like every time a new game was released from Retro Studios, they would lose some, you know, talented members of their teams. So, for example, like some of the the the, the artists from the original Metroid Prime series and and directors are no longer with Retro Studios. They left. Um, so you know, but but then again, you look at the quality of their games. Like the last one they made was Tropical Freeze, and that game is fantastic. So clearly, there are still very important, very talented people in the studio. Who knows? Maybe with Metroid Prime Four, some of the original team will come back to Retro to work on it. That's not totally unheard of. If they wanted to, they could. So let's hope that happens. You know, it might be a long shot, but maybe it'll happen. Maybe. Maybe Nintendo can start paying them a lot of money to convince them to, to stay there. Because I gotta tell you, out of every studio from Nintendo, I really think Retro Studios is the most talented. Uh, they, st they really get it, too, by the way. Like, I've never seen a developer adapt to Nintendo's worlds and the feeling of a Nintendo franchise as well as Retro Studio has. Again, going back to Next Level Games, I don't think they get it. You look at Dark Moon and you look at Luigi's Mansion 3, they don't look anything or feel anything like the original game, because Next Level Games doesn't get how to work with the Mario characters, whereas I think Retro Studios would. I'd Actually, I would wish Retro Studios was making Luigi Mansion 3, but that's another discussion. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about, though, is, you know, we've mentioned Tropical Freeze. Uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze launched in 2014. I believe it was around this time, sort of. It was February or March. I apologize. I don't know the, I don't know the date offhand. But it was, it, you know, so it's been about five years almost since Retro Studios has made a game. So you really have to wonder if they're now moving over to Metroid Prime 4 and developing that, which is no small undertaking. That's a big job. What have they been doing for the last five years? were they doing nothing? I mean, obviously not. People were going into work every day, so what were they doing? Now, we do know that Metroid, or we do know that Retro Studios has worked a little bit on some projects for Nintendo, but it was very minor work. Like, I think they made a couple tracks for Mario Kart or something like that. Uh, and also, this isn't officially known, but I have it on really strong sources that Retro Studios has worked or is working on Super Nintendo World. They are lending their their talents, their you know artists to the Donkey Kong portion of Super Nintendo World, which sounds like it's not even going to be in Japan. I don't think Japan is getting the Donkey Kong minecart attraction and the Donkey Kong Land. I think that's going to be exclusive to Orlando. Uh, but yeah, I do, I do, 
I have heard from some really reliable sources that Retro Studios has been involved with that project, so we know they've been working on that. But, you know, neither one of those things is particularly gigantic enough to where they couldn't be making a game. So I guess, long story short, uh, what is Retro Studios doing other than Metroid Prime 4? Because there's no way they haven't been making a game for five years. Was that canceled? Did they cancel whatever Retro Studios was working on in order to make Metroid Prime 4? Or are they capable of finishing up development on whatever this mystery game is and also starting Metroid Prime 4? Maybe that's the case. In the past, actually, Mr. Miyamoto has said that he would like to see Retro Studios work on more than one game at a time, and he did say that he feels they're capable and big enough to do that. Now, whether or not we want to take Mr. Miyamoto's word for it is another story, because, you know... As much as I love Mr. Miyamoto, he does say things that end up not being true, or he does say things that end up not happening for like five years. So, I think that's everything I wanted to say about Retro there. I'm excited that Retro Studios is making it. Definitely bummed that we won't be playing this game anytime soon, but if it ends up being an amazing experience that just looks gorgeous and sounds gorgeous and plays gorgeous, then I'm okay with it. Uh, Hopefully Nintendo has a lot to keep us occupied in the meantime, and hopefully it's not just a bunch of old-ass ports like they've been doing. I do want to mention, though, and this is where, you know, this is where I might take a bit of crap. Get ready, get ready with that thumbs down button, kiddos, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of call out Nintendo fans here, particularly Nintendo Switch fans. I noticed on the announcement video on YouTube that this announcement has seven, about 77 thumbs, 77,000 thumbs up, and only about 2,000 thumbs down, which is very interesting to me, because here we have a giant billion dollar company announcing that a game they promised is being canceled and moved over to a different studio, and you won't get this game for several years, and in fact, we are not going to tell you anything about this game for a long time. That is not an announcement that should be met with so much praise. It's like Nintendo Switch owners will clap for anything, to be honest with you. At this point, what wouldn't you be happy with? I mean, I know that Nintendo Switch owners have talked about how the online sucks, but I do, I have seen people say they're okay with the online and that they're paying for it. But it just seems like the Nintendo Switch could get away with murder. I think the Switch could, Nintendo could announce that actually, secretively, the Nintendo Switch has been spying on you this whole time because we wanted to collect data Uh, in households across the world that we could use for our own private, personal uh, reasons. And people would be like, Oh! Wow! Gee! Nintendo was... Reggie was listening to me when I sleep? Oh! Ah! Thank you, Nintendo! I mean, obviously, that's an exaggerated scenario, but it's like... It seems like the Switch can do no wrong for people. We've got a whole bunch of games that are just ports of old games, not even from Nintendo. We get it from third parties. We get it from indie developers. So the Switch definitely has a port problem. I'm sorry, it does. And then you look at the new games Nintendo makes for the Switch, and a lot of them, not all, but a lot of them feel rushed and unfinished. Kirby Star Allies, Super Mario Party, uh, Mario Tennis Aces, just to name a few. And those are like you know, usually treated like a big release and they just feel so lifeless and quickly thrown together. So this is what I wanted to point out. In this video, now, now, hold on, I'm going to actually defend Nintendo Switch fans here. I think the reason that this is met with so much positivity is that Nintendo made a video and they're being open and honest about it. They're, they're, they're saying, listen guys, we got some bad news. We're, we're going to cancel the game. And I think Nintendo fans are excited or, or positive about this because Nintendo is saying they're canceling it because it didn't meet their standards. Nintendo is canceling the game because they don't want to make a bad product and they don't want to disappoint fans. So fans of the Switch are like, oh man, Nintendo loves us. Well, hold your horses there, Switchos. <clears throat> hold on a second. I just got a memo in the office here. Uh, In regards to Nintendo being against making bad games that disappoint fans, let's see, what do we got here? Gotta put my bifocals on. All right, we got, what does this say? Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, Mario Party Island Tour, Wii Sports Club, Metroid Prime Federation Force, Paper Mario Sticker Star, Paper Mario Color Splash, Hey Pikmin, Mario Sports Superstars, Mario Party the Top 100, One Two Switch, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, Mario Tennis Aces, Arms, Chibi Robo Ziplash, Mario Party 9, Mario Party 10, uh, Star Fox Zero, uh, Mario Party Star Rush, uh, oh boy, this is a long list. What I'm getting at here, my friends, is Nintendo has clearly not been above the idea of rushing out a game and releasing a product that is not as good as it could be. Because they've done this a lot. They've done it a lot in the last, I would say, five to seven years. 
So, you know, let's not pretend like all of a sudden Nintendo is some godlike company that is opposed to the idea of quickly rushing out a product for money, because they've done it many times. Also, look at Nintendo Switch Online. I've mentioned that before. Nintendo Switch Online is a perfect example of Nintendo not listening to its consumers and releasing a very, very shoddy product. Not to mention, if Nintendo loves us so much, why don't they sell those Wii U ports for a budget price? Why are they full priced? Why aren't they $30, some of them 40 you know? So, you know, don't, don't clap for Nintendo too hard just because they came out and said, hey guys, we don't want to release a bad product because we know they've done that many times in the past, okay? Um, also, uh, don't give them too much credit because obviously they had to do this. They had no choice. There's no way, I mean, think about it. Do you really think Nintendo could have gone until 2022, 2023 before talking about Metroid Prime 4 again? Every single Nintendo fan, every Direct, we'd be like, ooh, I wonder if they're going to show Metroid Prime 4. <gasps> they didn't show Metroid Prime 4. Where is it? And as the years been, went by, we'd be really suspicious. We'd be like, wait a minute. You announced Metroid Prime 4 in like 2017, 2018, and it hasn't been around for like three or four years. What's going on? So they, they couldn't be silent about it. They had no other option than to make a video or make an announcement and just be like, guys, you know, and you know, tell us it's delayed. So again, don't give them too much credit. Now, don't get me wrong. We can't hate Nintendo too much for this. I don't hate Nintendo for this. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed that I won't be playing the game for a while, but if it was going to be bad, I don't want to play it anyways. I don't want another crappy game on the Switch. We've got plenty of those already. So it's just, it's just, it's disappointing that, you know, it's not happening. I guess that's at the bottom of the, at the end of the day, that's my problem with it. Um, But I am, you know, you know, I'm sure probably going to take some crap for this video. I don't know why, actually, why I would, because... I don't know what I've, I mean, I guess I called out Nintendo Switch owners, but they deserve it because you shouldn't be applauding a delay of a game in, in any way. Um, but at the end of the day, no, what I want to say is like, I, I'm happy that we're not getting a bad Metroid Prime game because we've already got a few bad Metroid games recently. Federation Force was pretty terrible. Thank you very much, Next Level Games. Uh, and then also Metroid Other M, obviously people didn't really like that game either. So the last thing we need is another bad Metroid game. And then there was uh, Metroid uh, Samus Returns, which I hear was a really good game, but it was put on a platform that is essentially dead at this point. So, you know, we need a really, really solid Metroid Prime experience. And it's really nice to see Retro Studios get behind the wheel again and uh, hopefully deliver on that. But... I really hope Retro Studios has another game that they've been working on that we will see and hear from very soon, because otherwise, Nintendo spent five years of not even utilizing their best game development studio. So anyways, this has gone way too long. Holy Lord, this is almost at 18 minutes. What the hell did I even talk about? I don't know. Um, Let me know in the comments below what you think. At the end of the day, I'm... I'm hopeful that Metroid Prime 4 is an amazing game because if there's one studio out there that could make it amazing, I truly believe it's Retro Studios. But I also hope that they are not being kidnapped and forced to make yet another Metroid Prime game when their talents could be used in many, many other ways. It's sort of like with Smash Brothers, right? Sakurai and his team are really talented and really ambitious and they can make great games, but it just feels like they've been forced to make Super Smash Brothers. And while that's cool... I'd like to see them make something different. And so that's kind of how I feel about Retro. So I hope they're able to make Metroid Prime 4, but also put out another game for the Switch, one that would come out like in the next year or two that we don't know about yet. Anyways, guys, like I said, leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this announcement. Seems like most Nintendo Switch fans are pretty positive about it. I'm not surprised, though, because Nintendo Switch fans will defend something like Super Mario Party. And that game is trash. Anyways, I, I could have ended this on a high note, but I had to say that. Anyways. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Looking forward to playing Metroid Prime 4 when I'm 78 years old. I'm going to be an old grandpa when I play Metroid Prime 4. What is this? A video game? Where are my glasses and my teeth? Oh, Samus is such a foxy young lady. I remember when they invented Samus. Oh boy, I went a little crazy at the end of this.